Helen Mirren returns for a new investigation in her award-winning role as Superintendent Jane Tennyson. Prime Suspect 5, coming soon. As you saw there, Granada's Prime Suspect has won many awards. Here are now TV favourites at the Royal Albert Hall. The National Television Awards. Outstanding performance in association with Panasonic. Good evening from London's Royal Albert Hall. The limousines are arriving. The stars are gathering. Very soon they'll be taking their seats alongside an audience of over 5,000 for television's biggest night of the year. The night when the people who matter most choose their favourite shows and personalities. So join us inside now for the second annual National Television Awards. Welcome your host for the evening, Trevor McDonald. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. And welcome to the 1996 National Television Awards. This is the award show with a difference. And the difference is that the winners of these beautiful trophies, designed by the jewellers H. Samuel, were chosen not by a panel of television professionals, but by you, the viewers. You were the ultimate judge and jury. And we're delighted to have so many of you here in the audience with us this evening. Over the last few weeks, we've diligently counted thousands of votes for all your favourite drama, soaps, light entertainment and comedy programmes. And tonight, we deliver your verdict. So let's go straight to our first award of the evening, the top quiz show. Quiz shows have always been very popular, especially among politicians. Their favorite seems to be the game from Take Your Pick, where they aren't allowed to answer a question with a straight yes or no. <laughs> Playing that game has saved the career of many a politician. So, here to present the award for the most popular quiz show, is every man's fantasy flatmate. Hot from BBC Two's Game On and ITV's forthcoming drama series Shaman, would you please welcome Samantha Janus. The nominations in the category of most popular quiz show are Big Break. Right, I'll show you how to hold a cue properly. How to hold a cue, great. There's no cue. No stuff here. You see, you snooker players let us down. You need a bit of show business. Watch this. Cue! Sure. <laughs> balls! Pardon? We need balls! <laughs> Family fortunes. Okay, can you meet Vi? Oh. Top eight answers in this second game. We asked a hundred people to name a famous Arthur. Kenny. Um, Shakespeare. Arthur Shakespeare. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> we need five from our last answer. Somewhere you'd find a lighted candle. Again, we'd had the top answer church. You then said, just in time, you said a birthday cake. Five or more wins you everything. You said cake, our survey said! Yes! Yes! Where did he come from? This is a very nice 
Take your pick. <laughs> did you have it made for you or did you make it yourself? I had it given me. You had it given you? I did. Who gave it to you? Your, your friend? A friend. Your sister? No, a friend. My friend. A friend. Did she a live friend. near you? She does. Did she bring you coffee? Is she a good mate, good buddy? She's a good buddy. Yeah. Is there a man in your life? My George. Your George? Yeah. And is he good to you? <laughs> <laughs> They think it's all over. Jimmy. 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 Uh, uh, ow! To this point. That's to this house. Big tits. Gaza. Gaza. He's on last week. Chris Agabusi. Em, 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 em. Bill, Bill, Bill. All the news, all the news. I'm not quite there, is it? That's the small, that's the small. No, I've got more. Lee Hurst. He swims. Oh, Duncan Goodyear. They think it's all over. <laughs> um, obviously, we have to thank all the people behind the scenes, but we're far too grand to actually know their names, the people in the production of this. But most of all, I'm very pleased to win this award for David Gower, who, despite being England captain and Leicestershire captain for about 15 years, this is the first thing he's ever won. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Before we move on, may I take a moment to explain how tonight's winners have been chosen? Lists of Britain's programmes with the highest ratings on ITV, BBC and Channel 4 were published nationally in the Sun newspaper and in the magazine TV Quick. In addition, television viewers across the country were given the chance to vote. Thousands upon thousands of your votes flooded into the Royal Mail, who in addition to counting them all, acted as scrutineers to ensure confidentiality and fair play. Last week, viewers of GMTV made their choice in a wide-ranging telephone poll. So with nearly a quarter of a million people taking part in the voting, this is without question Britain's most definitive viewers' verdict. Thanks to all of those of you who took the time and the trouble to cast your vote. The second presentation of the evening is for most popular drama series. To read the nominations and to present the award, May I ask you please to welcome the Duchess of York. Thank you very much, Trevor. Anyway, um, I'm really delighted to be here to present the award for Best Drama of the Year. And I'm sure that um, some of you uh, may think I should be receiving this award uh, <laughs> rather than presenting it. Anyway, the nominations in the category of most popular drama series are Band of Gold. I've got money that I deposited offshore. Money that I got from my company. Years of hard graft. I've got bank accounts Nita? that you I wonder what they'd have to say about all this money you've got. You bitch. You set me up. That's right. Well... I'll see you in hell. The bill. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before you hear it from a more unreliable source, my assessment, I 
got a result. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, of course, I knew that already. I heard it from Marion. But, uh, well, Gary failed, is that right? Reg. What? Heartbeat. Who took your time? Yeah, it's nice to see you too, Claude. I think the sergeant's going to need a stretcher. Sergeant, what about me? Yeah, all right, Claude. Did you find your treasure, then? Treasure? There weren't any, apart from a couple of brass goblets worth about nine pence. Well, it's a shame you went to so much trouble then. Uh, I need some form of compensation of spending the night down here with him. London's burning. And the winner is the bill. Thank you very, very, very much indeed. And I think we're all incredibly proud. And thank you so much indeed. Thank you. Well done, The Bill. The next award is Top Young People's Program. And here to make the presentation are two young people for whom 1996 has been a sensational year. One released her debut album, from which she's already chalked up three hits. The other shot to flame playing a troubled teenager. I didn't think that there were any other kinds but troubled teenagers. But will you please welcome top recording artist Louise and EastEnders Joe Wicks, Paul Nichols. And the, um, the nominations in the category of the Top Young People's Programme are... Art Attack. And look at that. A magazine border framed mirror. And let's face it, there's lots of different designs you could do and lots of different magazines that you can cut out of. What about framing your notebooks or your exercise books or even a greetings card or that special pop star pin-up. You could even do a card for your cassette boxes. I think that looks brilliant. Blue Peter. Oh, Last Wednesday we were electric go-kart racing, but today we're in for a barrel of laughs, because we're beer <laughs> barrel racing, not rolling them, but with the help of four wheels, actually racing yeah. them. <laughs> The kegs travel at 15 miles an hour. They're battery operated and you can race them indoors or outdoors. And just like Formula One, they don't go on grass. <laughs> the only thing is they haven't got any brakes, but they're quite easy to steer. And the accelerator is this thing here and you just pull it and off you go. <laughs> You can confer, you've got 10 seconds. You ready? There are five vowels in the alphabet. Can you give three of them? A, E, I, O, U. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you see, Kev, you're going.
going to Hollywood in California, <laughs> USA, courtesy of Funhouse. Have a nice weekend. See ya. <laughs> the new adventures of Superman. You made me believe that you were two different people, and you did that by lying. <laughs> And that makes me feel like I don't know you, and that really hurts me. And you know what? I am mad. I'm okay. really mad. I'm, I'm really, really mad. Clark, Good. I'm just Good. furious. Well, I cannot out, believe okay? it. And in your super. Please, somebody help me! Go! Go! And top of the pops. I know who I am, and you know what I'm about to do. You think that I can never laugh again? You'll see. You think that you've destroyed my faith in love. Accept the award on behalf of Top of the Pops, the Spice Girls. <laughs> right, we. Oh, go on, Mel. Go on, go on. Go on. Go on. I just want to say we are honoured tonight to accept this award on behalf of Rick Blackhill and Top of the Pops. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, it's nearly time for us to take a break now. In part two, we'll find out who you voted the top TV newcomer in your favourite comedy show. And we'll also pop round to Neighbours for a bit of a surprise. Outstanding performance in association with Panasonic. sell more breakfast cereals than anyone else in the world. Every single batch is rigorously checked for quality at each step of its journey from the farm to your breakfast table. Which is why we're happy to put our name on every single box. What's more, we don't make cereals for anyone else. So if you don't see the Kellogg's name on the box, 
it isn't Kellogg's in the box. Sagittarius, prepare yourself for upsets on the second. I did. How did they know it was my second? Meet my friend, Dilip. Ah, home pride curry sauce. Cooks so well in the oven, and it only takes a couple of minutes to prepare. So you've got more time to spend with your family. Oh. Ah, curry in a bevy. As we Scots say, stone stuff. <laughs> Home fried cooking sauces. Authentic flavours from all around the world. Also available in Glasgow. What's going on down there? Getting kind of tense, aren't you? Will you all calm down? Disney's Toy Story is coming to video on October 16th. Some shapes feel as if they've been designed to be picked up and held. Others are purely functional, made simply to do a job. Our new Nokia combines both. We shaped it to feel good in your hand and to fit your face perfectly. And like all Nokias, it's beautifully simple to use. Nokia, connecting people. V-Fit is the only yoghurt containing the live LGG culture. V-Fit, it's full of life. Standing performance in association with Panasonic. Welcome back to the National Television Awards. The talk show has been pronounced dead at regular intervals over the last few years, yet today there are more talk shows on television than ever before. The formats vary from the congenial to the confrontational, but basically they all have one thing in common. People talking, sometimes very loudly. To make the presentation for most popular talk show, a young lady who will soon be giving up her job behind the bar at the Rover's return to become a district nurse in the new ITV series, Where the Heart Is. Ladies and gentlemen, the nation's favorite barmaid, Sarah Lancashire. Nominations in the category of most popular talk show are The Clive James Show. <laughs> President Chirac attended lunch at Buckingham Palace where the Queen had personally arranged the menu of beef soup, beef pate, beurf en croute, <laughs> beef trifle, and cheese made from the milk of condemned West Country cattle. <laughs> After lunch, President Chirac rose to speak. Les inconvénients, mais aussi mesurés. Les avantages et les atouts pour l'être. La France, pour sa part, un choix présent, si vous l'estimez. Des O'Connor tonight. What about Englishmen? What do you think of Englishmen? You like that Bob Hoskins, didn't you? I sure did. He's the sweetest. I like men that talk like him too. Talk like well. Oh, that's nice to hear, darling. <laughs> The other big story of the week, <coughs> Michael Jackson getting divorced from Lisa Marie. Well, there's a surprise. <laughs> she said everything we had between us just melted away. Esther. Unfortunately, that lady is one of a dying breed, the yellow perils. We now have the blue perils in London, and we are ridden with them. Let's face it, the, I don't know who programs these people. They hide, they mutate, you know, in between crowds, in their, in their grey-green uniforms. In fact, some of them even go into telephone boxes and spin around and come out as traffic wardens, and they come for you. Ricky Lake. You know, I'm really... Be fed honest. up. Be I honest. am fed up. I am being honest. You keep your mouth shut. Okay. I am so sick of my weight having something to do with our relationship. I am just tired of it, okay? He takes do me to the bike bar. Do something about it then. 
Man, do have you ever tried to lose weight? This is a man who can eat whatever he years. wants, anytime he wants. I, he can gain and lose weight you at will. Tell these people what I eat. Tell them what kind of, what types I really, of food I really like. don't, it, it doesn't really it even has to interest do with, me it has, to hear what you... It has to do you, with weight. It has to do with weight. You can't go to Taco Bell and spend five bucks at Taco Bell for 59 maybe, cent Taco Bell. did you Bell. ever stop to think, Tim, that maybe it's your name calling that's making her go to Taco Bell in let the first place? That. And let yes. her answer that where the name calling comes in. The more... Ask where the name calling is. The when more the name... pressure that he puts on me to lose weight, the more I just want to go out and chow, man. <laughs> Ricky Lake. Thank you so much for this great honor. I do have some people that I, I need to thank. First and foremost, I want to thank my friends Liz Harker and Susan Fleischer for making this trip possible. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> to Channel 4 for taking a chance on this very, very different type of show for you all and for giving me such a wonderful home here in the UK. Columbia TriStar Television Distribution, who, who they syndicate my show. My talented staff and crew who make me look so good every day. But most of all, I want to thank you, the viewers, who watch us three days a week and who voted for me for this wonderful award. Thank you so much. Let's move now to the most popular newcomer award. It's often said that new talent is the lifeblood of television. I agree wholeheartedly especially as none of the nominees in this category is an up-and-coming newscaster. <laughs> to present the award, we have a young man who, although still only 24, is already a television veteran and a hit recording artist. You might know him as Robbie from Grange Hill or Billy May from London's Burning, but he is Mr. John Alford. The nominations in the category of most popular newcomer are Paul Nichols. Um, these are for you. Did they pretend you? No, no. Um, he, he said that I shouldn't bother you like until. Well, he was going to do it today, but he's been so busy and that. Um, well, I know I know I should have waited, but it's just I can't. I mean, I know it's been a bit of a shock, but I just wanted to. Well, yeah, it's sort of hello. Official like. Oh, come on, B. It ain't his fault you both got a pillock for a father. Thanks. I was gonna buy you a drink now, but I just ran out of money. Well, I've got to get back to the store anyway. Yeah, and you are underage. <laughs> well, um, I better get back. Listen, you want to dead for you. All right. See ya. Lisa Riley. You don't drop enough. You just drop me anywhere. Can't we just drive off together in the sunset? It's half eleven in the morning. You could drive slowly. Look, Andy, all in, all right? I suppose so. Hey, well, let's go into a village. When we call it Wolfpack, we'll buy you a drink. Uh, no thanks. I've got to get back straight away. Food for Kim. Mm, she could do it fattening up a bit. She's like a pregnant pencil. Hey, she has to have a gorgeous figure. Mm, she's hardly what you call voluptuous, though, is she? She's not fancy lying on a bit of comfort. Well, like a waterbed. Mm, with handles. <laughs> Tracy Shaw. <laughs> and? She misses you. Can't help that. I'm just saying, because I think you miss her too. I'm just trying to be good. I'm saying that you could get back with her if you wanted. I'm just trying to be a good mate. I think I should get back with her. I didn't say should. I said could. Yeah. 
Are you sure? If that's what you want, that's all I'm saying. You know what I want? Claire Sweeney. Yes. What are you doing here? I wanted to... I wanted to talk to you. After what you did to me and Kylie. Lens. You want to talk to me? Please, Lens. Just listen to me. No, you listen. While I tell you about our Kylie being dragged through one police cell after another by people who couldn't even speak English. What about me, terrified about where she was after they'd taken her away from me? Or what about her crying herself to sleep in some stinking jail a thousand miles away and it was her own dad that put her there? Or what do you think it was like when she wet herself because we didn't even know where it was put? I'm going to kill you, Patty. You're dead, Patty! And Nick Testoni. <laughs> I wish I'd known. James and I grabbed him out at the hospital. Are you and James? I think I might head off, Kelly. Thanks again for a very uh, pleasant and productive evening. Thank you, James. I'll see myself out. Uh, look, I'd better go too. Uh, thanks. Oh, I guess I should have spared myself the trouble, eh? I didn't know, Travis. Would it have mattered if you had? I oh, know you're being childish. I don't see what's so childish about wanting our last night together to be special. But you're only going away for one week. What's the big deal? It was for me. Pity it wasn't for you, eh? Travis! And the winner is... Lisa Riley. to say thank you to everyone who voted for me. Uh, this is a massive shock. Um, thank you to a fantastic cast, a fantastic crew, and I must say a big thank you to the script writers for giving me this fantastic character to play, which I love with all my heart. So thank you very much. Thank you to my mum and dad. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to slip on the shorts and sunglasses, throw a sheep on the barbie, and head for sunny Melbourne. Tonight, we'd like to pay a special 10th anniversary tribute to the residents of Australia's most famous close, Ramsey Street. Will you please welcome from Neighbours the very lovely Emma Harrison and the even lovelier Tom Oliver. Thank you, Trevor, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Emma and I are both thrilled to be here in England and at the Royal Albert Hall. I'm just sorry that we missed the last night of the Poms. The Proms, Proms. <laughs> 10 years ago, the BBC decided to revamp its daytime schedule. They looked around for a daily drama serial to fill the lunchtime slot. By a stroke of luck, Reg Watson, the man who created Crossroads, had moved to Australia a couple of years earlier and he was about to launch his new baby, a five-day-a-week serial entitled Neighbours. And so at 12.30pm on Monday, October 27, 1986, British TV history was made. The very first episode of the first Australian soap was broadcast. Is that Daphne? Yes. Hi, my name's Ramsey, Shane Ramsey. Yes, Mr. Ramsey. Uh, 
Uh, we're having a Bucks party for a mate tonight. I was wondering if you'd be available. Today, after 10 years, 17 weddings, 12 funerals. 13. What? 13 funerals. Cody died last week. Oh, yes, so she did. <laughs> 13 funerals <laughs> and more broken engagements than you can shake a sun-baked marsupial at. Neighbours is as much a part of the British way of life as the Queen Mother. Drizzle. <laughs> Why has it been such a huge success? Simple. It's a hit because it's fun. What about my dad? In a minute. No. Oh, God. If you lose my kitchen. <laughs> From the days of Shane and Melanie, Harold and Madge, right down to Cheryl and Lou, the emphasis has always been on the lighter side of life, even in the midst of tragedy. In the last decade, many Neighbours' favourite stars have gone in, on to international careers, and every pantomime in Britain now has to have its share of Antipodean actors to boo and cheer. <laughs> the success of people like Kylie Minogue, Jason Donovan, Craig McLaughlin and Guy Pearce <laughs> is in itself a tribute to the depth of talent that's, that made Neighbours such a hit, not just in the UK, but all over the world. Neighbours, everybody needs good neighbours with a little understanding. You can find the perfect blend That's when good neighbours become good friends So from these good neighbours, old and new To all our friends who have been watching for the past ten years we'd just like to say Thank you and, and keep, keep on, on watching. watching. Good night, Tirana. When it comes to comedy, the current thinking seems to be that the Americans are making hundreds of hilarious hit shows. The truth is that every single one of the top 20 highest rated comedy shows in the country is made right here at home. And here to present the award for most popular comedy program is a man who should feel right at home with so many people here dressed in penguin suits. The Vinnie Jones of comedy, back on ITV next year, Mr. Jack D. Thank you, I'm uh, absolutely delighted to be here. <laughs> you know, if you'd uh, told me ten years ago that I'd be at the Albert Hall tonight to receive this award, <laughs> you'd have been wrong, wouldn't you? <laughs> right, the uh, nominations <clears throat> in the category of most popular comedy programme... How's that for having your nose rubbed in it? <laughs> Father Ted. <laughs> What are you doing up? Oh, I always stay up, Father, in case one of you needs a cup of tea. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Oh, about three years now. <laughs> but we never get up at night, Mrs Doyle. Well, you're up now, aren't you, Father? Unless I'm hallucinating from lack of sleep. <laughs> That's happened before, all right. <laughs> I'm just getting my jacket to, to go for a little walk. Right, so... Keeping up appearances. Skis? <laughs> All the best people.
people have them. What am I going to do with skis? I mean, you don't expect everyone with a feather in his hat to be a partridge. Men behaving badly. On Saturday morning, a woman lying in bed next to her boyfriend, Gary, suddenly broke off a piece of her bedside table and stabbed him with it over and over again. I said I was sorry. As she was led away, Dorothy explained, I don't fear prison. It'll be far more civilised than my current lifestyle. <laughs> Why'd you have to do that in bed, Gary? It's what blokes do. <laughs> Why do you think women don't do it? Lack of confidence. <laughs> Nelson's column. Two thousand pounds for new greenhouse. His old one's fallen down. He says frost keeps getting to his seedlings. Save my seedlings is not the greatest of sob stories, is it? Oh, no. I've got a woman who needs IVF treatment. The NHS won't give it to her and she's desperate to have a baby. Oh, that's more like it. She is 63. <laughs> but she says that shouldn't be a barrier with new technology. Got a student needs funding for a trip to Italy. To do what? Just wants to go to Italy. Sadly, there can only be three losers. This law is so good it makes you sick. It's men behaving badly. Thank you so much. The BBC have asked us if we do another series next year, and by the sound of it, maybe you'd like that too. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice. Glad you like it. Yeah. Leg it. Time for a break now, some more of your favourite TV moments. In part three, we'll discover who you voted the number one comedy performer, your favourite actress, and the one I'm dreading, most popular newscaster. Outstanding performance in association with Panasonic. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Principles for men, we know. If our clothes don't keep their looks, our customers won't come back. Caroline Morgan, director of buying at Principles for Men, explains why Ariel is the only detergent they recommend. When men are comfortable in something, they want to wear it all the time. Weekend after weekend, day after day, and it gets dirty. So it has to be washed. And more than the wearing, it's the washing that causes us bubbling, even on whites. We've found that there's a detergent that keeps clothes looking really great. Ariel not only tackles mud and dirt, it also helps prevent bobbling. We're so impressed with the results that we've seen. We want all our customers to know we recommend Ariel. Because if our clothes look good, we look good. When you demand the impeccable, demand Ariel. Say bye-bye to bottle foundation and discover new Simply Powder Foundation. Covers like a liquid, but they put it in a powder. New Simply Powder Foundation from CoverGirl. Sunshine. 
only sweet corn picked at the peak of perfection is young and tender enough for Green Giant. Taste the sunshine. Green Giant. New releases are always in Woolworths. Heather here has just ordered 200 cane chairs from Hong Kong. Oh, listen, we need it with Gin and tonic, please. Thank you, Rory. She's on the phone all the time, so the good news is that from October the 8th, BT are cutting many calls to the Far East by up to 25%. A five minute weekday daytime call to Hong Kong that was £4.59 comes down to £3.44. And with BT's business discounts, it can be £2.52. Ring 0800 800 800. Oh, hang on, I haven't finished yet. For your savings checkup. When non serious arthritic conditions cause you pain, smooth on Movilat Relief. Soothe away pain. And now the classified results Arsenal 1, Chelsea 1. <laughs> Wall 2, Bristol City 2, Reading 1, Barnsley 1, East 5 4, Hawker 4. Dividend forecast, good. That you, dear? Good result. Aye, we've won the pools. Oh, doodle! All right, contain yourself. Littlewood's pools get a result. performance in association with Panasonic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please say hello, good evening and welcome to Sir David Frost. Thank you very much indeed. Um, the next category is for most popular newscaster. But in addition to the four nominees, there were a, a number of newscasters who were definitely not nominated for tonight's award. For instance, there was the newscaster on Classic FM who said, and I quote, the German Chancellor Helmut Kohl was pelted with eggs when he attended a rally in Berlin today. He was whisked away by police. <laughs> and of course, there was the newscaster also on Radio 2 who said, and I quote, at the unorganized conference today, I'm sorry, at the UN organized conference today, <laughs> maybe he was right the first time. But to... <laughs> so to our nominees, our nominees tonight. The nominations in the category of most popular newscaster are, first, Michael Burke. The Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, the architect of the Middle East peace process, has been assassinated. He was shot at least twice as he left a huge rally for peace in Tel Aviv tonight and died shortly afterwards in hospital. You've spelled out uh, these complaints in some detail personally to John Major. Officials say these conversations were difficult and frank. Uh, how difficult? How frank? What did you say to him? I said to the Prime Minister exactly what I'm saying to you now. At least half the population of the Irish Republic is expected to watch Michelle Smith in the 200 metres butterfly final later tonight. Her supporters at her home in Dublin say that with three gold medals already under her belt, the celebration party has already begun. Second, Trevor MacDonald. Good evening. The Northern Ireland ceasefire was broken tonight by a huge explosion in London Docklands. More than 100 people were wounded, at least eight seriously, including two police officers. Who do you vote for today? Yeltsin. Yes. Right. Are you worried about reports about his ill health, that he's not very well? Not very much. He's not very much in good health, always. <laughs>
And finally, a badger cub is recovering at an animal sanctuary tonight from a hair-raising experience in a Hampshire farmhouse. Seeking safety and warmth there, the cub climbed into a washing machine and went through a full wash and spin dry before she was discovered. Third, Martin Lewis. A peace deal for Bosnia. The warring factions reach a full and comprehensive agreement to end three and a half years of war. President Clinton called it an historic and heroic decision to turn from the horrors of war to the promise of peace. Now live to Los Angeles in the O.J. Simpson murder trial verdict. You are looking at O.J. Simpson as he and the rest of the American nation wait for the verdict in a trial that has gripped them now for nine months. Mrs. Robertson. Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles. You say you've uh, approved closed circuit television for 120 schools. Was this school in, in, in Wolverhampton one of the schools that's getting closed circuit I, television? I don't believe so, but I have to say I haven't got that information to hand. So uh, therefore it wouldn't have been good enough for this school what you're doing. You're not doing enough. And fourth, John Suchet. Good afternoon. You join us as we prepare to take live coverage of the Prime Minister's first full statement to Parliament since the Docklands bomb attack on Friday night. The bombing, which ended the 17-month IRA ceasefire, left two people dead and scores injured. It also threw the Northern Ireland peace process into disarray. Mr Walgrave, the report specifically blames you and two other ministers for the failure of the government to, inf uh, to inform Parliament of its change of policy. Well, Isn't that a resigning matter? Let's remember that it dismisses the central charge. A doctor did what no boxer had ever done today, brought a tear to the eye of Frank Bruno. Britain's best-loved boxing star was warned he could go blind if he took another punch. So, reluctantly, he announced his retirement from the ring. So, who of those four superb broadcasters wins the, wins the coveted silver python here? <laughs> it is none other than... He is the news at 10 tonight, Trevor McDonald. I'm supposed to be doing the other thing. Thank you very much for this award. Uh, thank you very much to all those people who voted for me. I work with a great bunch of people on News at 10. It's a fantastic team. Uh, they're all younger than me and they've learned to tolerate my idiosyncrasies. I, instead of making points simply, I now deliver long sermons, uh, but they all <laughs> seem to be very tolerant. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I get paid to read the news. Prizes like these are a marvelous, marvelous bonus, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next presentation this evening is for most popular actor. And to present the award is an actress who currently is starring in her own series, Beck, which began last week on BBC One. May I ask you please to give your warmest welcome to Amanda Redmond. Good evening. The nominations in the category of most popular actor are Robbie Coltrane. Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It is 30 odd years since my last confession. May God help you confess your sins with true sorrow. Sorrow? Yes. Ah, well, that's a problem because the first one's adultery and I'm not at all sorry. What do you get for that these days, a novena? It was well worth it. Does your wife know? Yes, I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I hurt my wife. Anything else? 
Uh, I drink too much. I smoke too much. I gamble too much. I am too much. David Duchovny. <laughs> Surprise! It's not on the map in this country. What our government will do to keep it that way? How's that? Last night we were chased by some kind of hit squad, driving what looked an awful lot like CIA fleet sedans. Well, I may be able to negotiate a deal that would guarantee your safety. What kind of deal? I'll turn over the digital tape in return for your reinstatement. No, sir. I need that tape. I need those files. I'm talking about a way to save your life. I'm talking about an elaborate conspiracy against the American public. Do you know what we found last night? What? An extremely elaborate filing system of medical records. Locked inside a mountain vault. For the purpose of? I don't know. But the answer's got to be on that tape, in those files. Is that answer worth your lives? It's obviously worth killing us for. In your wildest dreams, what do you possibly hope to find, Agent Mulder? Why they killed my father. In vain, I have struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. In declaring myself thus, I am fully aware that I will be going expressly against the wishes of my family, my friends, and I hardly need add my own better judgment. The relative situation of our families is such that any alliance between us must be regarded as a highly reprehensible connection. Indeed, as a rational man, I cannot but regard it as such myself, but it cannot be helped. David Jason. There's a smell about illness. Not illness itself. Just a smell. When we went into Hockey's house, it was there. It was how my house smelt. You know, when... and afterwards. And it never went away. And now I'm living in a room over an Indian restaurant and it still hasn't gone away. He loves you very, very much. But he's scared that you might have to go away. That the courts might make you. And you know what it's like to lose someone you love very much, don't you? So, he's just doing what he thinks is best. Trying to make it easier for you. Well, I don't want to go. I want to stay here. Well, we'll talk to Nigel in the morning, eh? He'll send me away. No. Yeah, they'll take me away and I won't ever see him again. <laughs> Dad, won't, Dad won't let me see him. He doesn't it's like Nigel. Simple. Promise, please. Promise me that he won't take me away. Please, don't me All right. I promise you can stay with Nigel. You won't have to go away. Okay, the winner is David Duchovny. David Duchovny couldn't be here with us tonight. He's filming in the new series of The X-Files in Vancouver, from where he joins us now. Thank you so much for, for this uh, award. It's, um, it's, it's a great honor to be awarded uh, by, by viewers, first of all, not by committees that uh, choose who is who is best or who is most popular but by by everybody in in, uh, in a viewing audience and also to be honored in, in a country that uh, I don't live in um, and uh, to be to be honored among such fine British actors as, as are nominated in this category like Robbie Coltrane and uh, the rest of everybody who's I'm sure 
so deserving, much more deserving of this than I am. Um, thank you. Thank you, David, and thank you, Amanda. All the great comedians have one thing in common. With a single word or even just a look, they can make us laugh. All the nominees in our next category share that gift. To find out who you voted most popular comedy performer, we have a young lady who is the face and figure of Wonderbra. Please say hello, boys, to Caprice. Thank you. And the nominations in the category of most popular comedy performer are Rowan Atkinson. So, pickpocketing. <laughs> A crime which has traditionally been looked upon with some indulgence. We have all seen the musical Oliver and are familiar with the images of <laughs> jolly apple-cheeked urchins in big hats. <laughs> Well, dispel this cosy impression. The artful dodger was a thief. And no amount of um papa or boom titty titty will change that. And we have Martin Clunes. Your lips are like liver. That's life. <laughs> now, at ten, your mother sat you down and she told you that Kermit was really just an old green sock. At twenty, she told you about Santa Claus. What about and... him? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> this is the awful moment when I tell you that the Easter Bunny absolutely and totally does not exist at all. Well, maybe not where you come from. <laughs> Here, we've got our very own proper Easter Bunny. I've seen it. No, you have not seen it. Yes, I have. Everyone in the village has. Alice, you're lying. And if you don't apologise, I'm going to have to punish you. And this hairbrush features quite prominently in the punishment. <laughs> and your pants don't. <laughs> and last but not least, Nicholas Linhurst. Who the hell are you supposed to be? Well, can't anyone guess? <laughs> You're Robin Hood, so I'm Maid Marian. <laughs> Peter Pan! <laughs> Wendy? <laughs> I saw a green tunic hanging up in her wardrobe, so I just naturally assumed that... <sighs> Best laid plans, eh? I mean, you know, Robin Hood, Maid Marian, we're one of life's all-time couples. That's how I wanted all these people to see us. Be your right breast to slip. <laughs> and the winner is... Martin Clues. Thanks very much. Um, it's for, oh, thanks, Trevor. Um, it's for, it's really nice. You know, it's you know that we we make it for people to watch it and laugh. Although we laugh a lot while we're making it ourselves, which is important too. But I guess it's very important that a a product ends up somewhere. And it's very very nice that you like it that much. So we'll do another one. Thanks very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Caprice. And we were very lucky to have her here tonight because... <laughs> Gentlemen, please. I was about to make a serious point. Because, as you know, it's National Wonder Bra Week. And, uh, and she's got a lot to pack in. So... <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Join us after the break with the answer to this question. Which of these sophisticated characters has won the award for top entertainment presenter? Find out when we come back. Outstanding performance in association with Panasonic. With 110 years' experience in telecommunications, it's not surprising that Ericsson has an advanced mobile phone for every network. Light but powerful phones, such as the GH388, which gives you up to four and a half hours talk time and 80 hours standby. Ericsson, we've got a phone for everyone on every network. Sanatogen Gold, our most comprehensive multivitamin ever. confident are you in your wives? Uh, yeah. oh. This is the Dad's Double Step Challenge. I saw you on the telly the other day, coming down some street, and you just don't think it's you, do you? Do you use Dad's? Yes. Are you prepared to show us your whites right now? I have got some on the line at the moment, yes. Really? My husband's T-shirt, which he always gets dirty. What does he do then? He's a carpenter joiner, and he gets all very dusty because he wipes his hands down. But I only have to do it once with Dad's. They always come up sparkling, fresh white. Well, you said it, Jill. It's certainly sparkly white. Would your whites pass the Dad's doorstep challenge? Jill's did. Don't tell your husband I was here today, all right? He won't believe me anyway. <laughs> What's the big deal, Bob? To try out our new Tuscany wallpapers at just three ninety nine dollars per roll, hold your telly against the wall now. Don't want to end up like your mother, do ya? Only Christmas to look forward to. <laughs> Pepper Army Gobbler. It's a bit of all right. Time? Time is not a problem. The real problem is how you use time. I hate cars. In the old days, you had to have a car. If you didn't have a car, you couldn't see your customers. I talk to my customers every day. From the set. I don't have to leave the office. I can see their faces. I can read their minds. <laughs> I love speed. If your customers could use information quickly, so could you. Feel free to call at and Standing performance in association with Panasonic. Welcome back to the Albert, Albert Hall. The size of this building is absolutely incredible. Apparently, it was designed originally as a hangar for Bernard Manning. <laughs> but then they discovered it was too small. The next award is for one of the most difficult jobs in television, entertainment presenter. Part comedian, part ringmaster, this rare television breed thrives on the unexpected. To give the awards, please welcome two characters who are best known for creating the unexpected. The very furry Zig and Zag. Ah, get off! Are we here? Are we here? Hello, it's just uh, Seth Kensington Tube 
station. Ah, Zig, we're, we're supposed to come through the big globe thing. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Hello. Oh. It's, um, it's that bloke. Wait, which? It's, it's the bloke from the, um, the, um... Dun, 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 Hey, hey, gen Hi, Uncle Trevor. Please, please, gent gentlemen, please. Yes. May I persuade you to read the nominations, uh, if you would? Thank you oh, so much. The envelope, the envelope, the envelope. Yeah, well, yeah read it then. <coughs> you haven't lost it, have you? Uh, oh, no, you Caprice, stop it, you're tickling. No, no, that, that's Fergie. Hey? That's Fergie. Oh, Get sorry. Um, the nominations in the category of most popular entertainment presenter are... Michael Barrymore! Where are you from? Stockwell! Stockwell. I will watch you. I always watch you. Every time I come and see you, I always watch you. On the television, I always see you. I always watch you. Yeah, I got you the first time. I say sorry for the fact that this is the show in the, in the series. Now, I can't actually say that number because, unfortunately, someone, some bright spark, has decided to play a very silly trick. I don't think it's funny. It doesn't amuse me at all. I'd like to have been able to stop it, but, unfortunately, I don't have the power and influence that you might think. I, uh, I'm merely a figurehead. I have no authority here. And so... <laughs> When I was told that if I actually said that number, a terrible, <laughs> terrible fate... <laughs> a terrible fate could befall the guests in the Great House. I said no. Uncle! <laughs> what, what? What? What are you going on about? Hey, have a bit of respect here. It's just that I can't say this number. Why? What will happen if you say 98? No! <laughs> Chris Evans! Oi, Evans! You rubbish. rubbish! We've got a better Chris Evans to play you, Chris Evans! Fine, fine, OK, I understand. I, I understand. So who's playing the lead, then? Is, is it Mike Kane? Is it Tommy Cruise? Is it, is it Chuck Heston? Um, hold on a second. Can you take your mask off, please? Hey! <laughs> it's Chegwin. Build him up, Keith Chegwin. It's Keith Chegwin. It's Chegwin. Ch Keith Chegwin. Crazy Keith. He's the man for the job. Excellent choice. Ex excellent. I'm sure he'll be brilliant. Bye. What? He seems to have taken that quite well. <laughs> Lily Savage! Oh, you look good. You're doing sorry, I'm nice. I got two hours over time. Oh, I mean, no, I'm clean here in the National Park. Oh, you're not basement. on the stage here? No, no, I'm cleaning. That'll and come, it. darling. Stick with me. I tell you what, Dame Judy's dressing room is something to be seen. And if heaven's burn, I know I'm not to blame. It's a liberty. Lifting my spirit. What am I to do? I can't have it. Reprieve. <laughs> The winner, please, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Feck. <laughs> Father Ted. Oh, sorry. What? The winner, please. May yeah, I? Yes, well, if you wouldn't mind doing your job, Trevor, you Thank could read you. it out. Well. Get what, what? Can I help you open it? Oh, this it's in here! Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Take it, then. Thank you. Thank you. John Suchet wouldn't have behaved like this. You can. I know. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> oh uh, let's have a look. Let's, let's have a look. look. Oh, my. Michael Barrymore! Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, Michael Barrymore couldn't be with us tonight as he's in Long Beach in California filming in his new ITB series, so let's join him there. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, everybody who uh, voted for me uh, for this award. It's uh, come at a very important time in my life. And uh, also to everybody who sent thousands of cards and uh, get well wishes uh, when I was in hospital earlier in the year. I'd like to thank uh, my wife, Cheryl, um, for her support in what has been a very difficult year for Arsenal. And uh, I would also like to wish everybody on the Arsenal subs bench 
um, who are not there at the moment, Tony Adams, Merson and myself, and wish them good luck as well. We're here at the moment in California with an American crew uh, filming the remake of Riverdance called Some Old Trout Does a Jig, and it will be shown later in the year. Thank you very much indeed. From me, Michael Barrymore, in glorious heat, in a glorious situation, in a glorious new show, the music film. Back to you, Tom. Thank you very much, Michael Barrymore. We now come to the most popular factual entertainment program. And here to present the award is someone I've been looking forward to meeting all day. Please welcome the Lord of the Dance, Michael Flatley. Hey, Trevor, how are you? Great, great. Yeah. Michael, as I said, I've been, I've been looking forward to meeting you all day. I've watched you do these marvelous steps. Um, can, I, can I ask a favor? Sure, yeah, go ahead. What is it? What is it? You remember Angela Rippon did a few wonderful moves <laughs> on television. You, could, you, could, you, could you teach me, could you teach me just a few steps so that I could, I could probably try? Right here? Right there. Right now? Yeah, please. All right, sure. Man. You mean something like this? How is that? Oh, it's good, it's good. It's good. Envelopes. Yep. I want royalties. <laughs> okay. The nominees in the category of most popular factual entertainment program are Animal Hospital. Do you remember Harry, the little puppy with the badly deformed leg? In a complicated operation, Jeremy put two pins into the elbow joint to try and straighten it. That was four weeks ago, and the other day Harry came back so that Jeremy could check his progress and possibly remove one of the pins. All along I've been very worried that um, if it doesn't work we might have to consider amputation. But yeah. at the moment, this is, oh, this is, this is really looking um, encouraging yeah. and, and really good enough to, to, for me to probably think that we're not going to have to do that. Yeah. Well, he's definitely putting that foot down, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm very pleased about that. Antique Roadshow. It is so wonderful to find a work of art from this period. And I shouldn't think it's even insured, is it? No, no, I had no idea it was, except that it was a family picture, that it was valuable at all, really. Well, they come on the market so rarely, it's very difficult to put a valuation on it. But it is certainly worth £60,000. Oh. I said to my son just now, it's probably worth about three. You and your sister can have a thousand and I'll have a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> the big breakfast. Oh, Which yeah. one's Zig? Oh, Zig. Oh, okay. You, you don't know Zig and Zag? Um, no, I don't. You don't? Well, oh, it's sort of embarrassing, isn't it, Pamela? Yeah, that's sort of embarrassing, embarrassing, but it's okay, it's um, okay, baby. Don't you worry. And Pamela's just a signed autograph. Photograph. Oh, thank you. Oh, me. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yes, Zig. thank you. Oh, Zig. We can put this by our bed, baby. Look, we have a signed autograph. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Can I, can I just see? It's a little oh, revealing. Where am I? Um, oh. oh. But it's clothes. I want a naked picture. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Master Chef. Now we've got, um, I assume we have a fairly exciting bit of turbot to look um, at. Well, fairly exciting. <laughs> Can we see it? Turbot's been very difficult to get hold turbot's of. Turbot's also very expensive at the moment. And the winner is Animal Hospital.
Well, what a thrill uh, again to, to win it. It's uh, just overwhelming. Um, so many people to thank. I'd like to thank my wife for teaching me over the years that we've been together how to, how to look at animals and treat them with some sensitivity and love and affection. Um, I'd like to thank the RSPCA, without whom none of this would happen. But most of all, I think we should thank you, the viewer at home, for, for uh, giving us this marvellous award. And let's hope we continue to entertain and interest you. Thank you. Our next category is Most Popular Actress. And here to present the award is a young man who first leapt into the limelight with his portrayal of Robin of Sherwood. Since then, he's gone on to star in films and television, both here and in Hollywood. Later this month, you'll be seen in the title role in Grampian's film of Macbeth. May I ask you please to welcome Mr. Jason Connery. The nominations in the category of Most Popular Actress are Gillian Anderson. Now move slowly towards the couch. Turn around and sit down on your hands. Are you going to let me tell you why I'm here? I know why you're here. I want to know who sent you. Whose errand boy you are. No one sent me. You got the rest of your life to give me answers. Jennifer Ely. Our whole family must partake of her ruin and disgrace. I'm afraid you have long been desiring my absence. This unfortunate affair will, I fear, prevent my sisters having the pleasure of seeing you at Pemberley today. Oh, yes. Be so kind as to apologize for us to Miss Darcy. Say that urgent business calls us home immediately. And if you would be so kind, to conceal the unhappy truth as long as possible. I know that it cannot be long. Dervla Kirwan. Oh, God. Hey, he's in on it, too. No, 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 no. Oh, God. I just don't believe this. I don't believe you. I am not asking you to believe me. I am simply asking you to push. Sarah Lancashire. I mean, it's not just you. I never learn. I never learn, Betty. Oh. And now I just feel cheap and dirty and second hand. And more than anything, so stupid. Oh, you're not the first girl love that's ever been taken advantage of. Oh, Betty, I'm nearly 30. I shouldn't be a pushover for anybody. No, but you, you see, you've got a lovely nature. And you trust people, love it. Never again. <laughs> Jacqueline Perry. <laughs> Ah, a good company. It's a long walk back to my house. 
Oh, well, I'm not carrying you. My back's gone. Yours is nearer. You what? I do a great line in massage. Soon have that back sorted. I can imagine. And you wouldn't need your hot water bottle. Been wanting to do that for ages. I know. You and all. You are a very wicked girl, you are. I know. And the winner is... Dervla Kirwan. Um, firstly, may I thank everyone who put pen to paper and voted for me. I'm very proud. Um, I have to thank Richard Stand, even, Robert Cooper, uh, Tony Garnett, and the wonderful Joy Leo for giving me the part in the first place. Thank you. Um, the magnificent crew and cast of Ballycus Angel, the wonderful Paul Harrison, who makes a 12 hour shift an absolute joy, and uh, my co star, Stephen Tompkinson, for. Uh, Give me back a sense of humour. Thank you very much. Thank you. After the break, the award for most popular entertainment programme, a special award to one of Britain's best loved stars, and we'll find out who is victorious in the War of the Soaps. Outstanding performance in association with Panasonic. Thinking of visiting Ireland's fairest city? Go with Stenaline. Their special offer means it's £10 return right to the city centre. For the new Stena HSS, that's a fair price indeed, so it is. To book, call 0990 75 75 75. Stena Line, the next generation of ferry company. Ma'am, we understand you're in touch with people from the other side. Go! Put these away for me, Di. Is it true you're in touch with the other side? Oh, yes. Oh, Mrs. Jones Seven's the post. They may be in a faraway place now, but that's no problem for me. Can you demonstrate your ability to contact the others? If you like. You use a mobile phone? Oh, yes. With the Vodafone digital network, you see, I can easily reach people on the other side. Or Festinyog, Betrasakoid, Llanvair, Pulgwingir, Gogerr, Gwyndrobit, Llantisilio, Go, Go, Go. All over the place. Will you? I have a couple of funny city folk here. Could you have a word? I guess we'll have to keep on looking. The Vodafone network. You are not alone. No idea what was happening. We just thought the babies. It was terrifying. Everyone was great. Even the insurance guy came within half an hour of the call and sorted it all out. Commercial Union. We won't make a drama out of a crisis. I'm starving. Let's get something to eat. Yes, but where? There. With this hair. Don't worry. You're crazy. No. New Formula Wash and Go. Leaves your hair feeling so clean it squeaks. Easy to comb, fresh, and fully revitalized. New Formula Wash and Go. Great hair, no fuss. This is the new Toyota Starlet. Want to see her perform? Gone with the wind? You said it. 
Sound of music. Here are a few of my favorite things. Lassie come home. Yes, she did, with a two-ton string of sausages and 17 mates, thanks to a rather spacious interior. 2001, why wait that long? Call this number now. The new small car in front is the new Toyota Starlet. Ending performance in association with Panasonic. A radio show starring a ventriloquist might seem a fairly surreal idea, but that's where our next guest got his first big break in the 1950s. 19 royal variety shows and 31 gold discs later, he remains one of the country's best loved entertainers. Ladies and gentlemen, to give the award for most popular entertainment program, the man who it said did the cabaret at the Last Supper. Mr. Max Bygraves. Wow, what a reception. I feel like Frankie Dittori. <laughs> anyway, the nominations in the category of the most popular entertainment program, and they are in this order, Jim Davidson's Generation Game. <laughs> Try for the table. House party. No, it's going to be how much? How, how much longer? It's going to be about ten minutes. They found something else. Leave it. Hang on one second, darling. Hi. This is a wind-up, isn't it? This is. This is. This is. What is? No, Noel Edmonds, you've got me today, haven't you? You've got. Tell me, you've got me. Please tell me it's you, because I've lost the car. All right, just write. Write down your nose. Stars in their eyes. He's once again today. Seen live. Robert Trenchard. Singing live, Paul Davis is David Bowie! 40 years of ITV laughter. September 1955 was notable for two major cultural events, the publication of Lolita and the launch of ITV. Now, Lolita opened with the words, light of my life, fire of my loins. <laughs> ITV opened with a broadcast from the Guild Hall and a commercial for toothpaste. Well, which one is your uh, picture, Dunstable? Do you like it, sir? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, very, very much indeed, Dunstable. It's not Auntie Nora, who lives in the country, who I go to stay with sometimes. <laughs> Yes, that, that's, that's really very, very good, Dunstable. Uh, tell me, uh, didn't you have room to paint your Aunt Nora's legs at the bottom? <laughs> no, so I done them on the other side. And the winner is Stars in Their Eyes. Oh, great. This is great.
Hey, um, we haven't had a Max Bygraves on yet. If uh, anybody wants to apply, <laughs> this is really fantastic because um, I love presenting stars in their eyes. And uh, I have to say, thank you, you've been brilliant. Now, I don't know if you know, there's about 200 different ways of saying thank you, you've been brilliant, because that's the number of people who've actually dared to walk through, through those magic doors. God knows why they do it, would you? I wouldn't. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to accept this in the memory of Leslie Crowther. <laughs> because it was Leslie who made this show famous, and he was a fantastic entertainer, and he was a great bloke. Thank you very much. Now, as you can see, this trophy is not the same as the others. It's gold set with a diamond. This is the Special Recognition Award. It's given to members of a tiny elite group of performers who appear every generation or so to dazzle us with something more than their consummate skill, a quality that makes them loved and respected by critics and audiences alike. The ability to be achingly funny one moment and tragically sympathetic the next. In other words, that magic ingredient, watchability. The winner of this special award tonight has watchability by the bucket load. And for the past 30 years, he's been using it brilliantly to enrich all our lives. I understand you have some information for me. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, they're innocent! Innocent! You understand? In the last 10 years, he's had six successes in a row, which, I mean, are, you know, that's extraordinary. Open All Hours, Only Fools and Horses, Porterhouse, Blue, A Bit of a Do, uh, Darling Buds of May and Frost. And in each one, he's totally utterly different. Uh, I want you. You are. I ache for your body. Oh, there. One of the first times we ever worked together, I was playing the dotty old earl, Lord Rustless, and he played Dithers, the hundred-year-old gardener, and he was hilarious. He spoke a sort of rural, muck spreading language that no one could understand at all. I got my body, I got the body. Oh, I don't mean get a bigger hat, you damned old twit. I mean get something larger to put the rubble in. Yes, that's the idea. I love to watch him perform. He really believes that he's Granville or Del Boy or, or Frost within himself. Uh, it's not difficult for him to assume these characters. He puts them on like a coat. He really does. But there's never any question in his own mind as to who he is. It's called good acting. I don't trust that sort. There's a lot of females either at your throat or down your throat. Yeah, quirky. Sets my teeth on edge. I don't know what it is. He, he likes to eat on screen. Have you noticed that? I watched him eat his way through Frost, and uh, in open all hours, he would eat anything he could lay his hands on as Granville. <laughs> oh, eh. oh, I've been sweeping round these things for two years. Yeah, why don't you give up on these, eh? Look, they're never going to get rid of these. Who's going to buy these? Don't worry about them, Granville. They're a little bit too advanced for you, those are. You just stick to basics, like how the hell you're going to pay for that ice cream. <laughs> when Ray Buck first called me, phoned me and said, what about David Jason? I, I was the man who said, no, I don't think David Jason is right for Dell. So there you go, you know? Uh, the following day, the BBC had the phone removed from my ward. So. Are you two at it again, are you? Dill, how do you pronounce that fella's name on the telly? Sidney Poitier or Sidney Potter? Personally, I pronounce it Harry Belafonte, but you two <laughs> please yourselves. I love that swaying walk. We used to call it the pimp roll. Uh, I don't know where he learned it, but he was good at it. His technical precision is a joy to watch. His energy is 
fantastic. We will do a scene, as you know, again and again and again. And rather than David flagging, it gets better and better. And he'll do a shot and he'll say, no, I'm not happy with that, I'll do it again. And everyone else will say, that was fine, it was perfect, wasn't it? And he will just do something else that big. And you'll think, yes, now it's perfect. Pushing. That's it. Good girl. And on. Come on, come on, Raquel. Give me some welly girl. Would you let go of my leg, Dills? Oh, that's so beautiful. Do you like some gas in here? No, thank you. Oh, well. Deep, 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 deep. It's good stuff, this. Better not tell Rodney about it. I really don't think there is anyone else who can swing from sort of high comedy to high drama so seamlessly uh, and effortlessly. I was born for this moment. Yes. Oh, we're going to have such fun. We are. You mark my words. This time next year, we'll be millionaires. He always called me the governor. And uh, when I retired, um, he had a party, and I wrote a poem, and I wrote a, uh, did a, a big scroll, and handing over the governorship to him, because I thought, he is the governor. You're not a young man. Your temper gets worse. Temper gets worse? Temper? What temper? We feel it would be in your best interest to seek other employment. No, not sacked, Scullion. But for everyone's sake, it would be better if you looked for another job. You sacked me? After all these years in this college, and you've sacked me? No, Scullion. No, it's not you, is it? It's him! <laughs> I think it's his total dedication, total commitment, um, and his ability, his love of the audience, and his ability to give 110% of himself to the audience, which I think is the reason the audience has loved it. I mean, I couldn't work with somebody I didn't like for 16 years, couldn't do it. I love working with him. Nature compensates. What do you mean? Well, with a face like that, he's got nothing to smile about, has he? <laughs> we, we know comedy is hard, and, and anyone who can make me laugh at six o'clock in the morning deserves an award. Uh, you're a partner, you're a friend, and you're a bit of a hero of mine. Thanks very much. And as uh, <laughs> would say, I'm well chuffed. Good on you, Ken. <laughs> it's an honor to present the Special Recognition Award to Granville, Del Boy, Pop Larkin, and one of ITV's most popular shows as Detective Inspector Jack Frost, the great Mr. David Jason. surprise and what a <clears throat> well a wonderful accolade to be given this lovely award by the people who have given me so much pleasure to entertain and I mean the viewers my main thank you
Thank you. It has always been my main driving force to enjoy my work, enjoy the job, and to entertain the audience, because I think that's the most important job any actor can do. And uh, I would like to just say that <clears throat> without the team that I have been very, very fortunate enough to work with over the years, and I mean, we've just seen them, Ronnie Barker, Nick Lindhurst, the writer John Sullivan, all the writers on Frost, the producers and directors who have been behind me 100% to help me achieve this very special moment in my life. And I would like to thank them all personally, even Johnny Ray, the props boys at Frost, who have also looked after me so well, and I go, I mean that for all of the team and all of the teams that I've worked with over the years. I thank them for helping me win this very precious award, and I thank you personally from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And finally, the one you've been waiting for, the Clash of the Titans, the Battle of the Giants, the award for most popular soap. Soap operas, or drama series to give them their proper name, began on radio in the United States in the 1930s as a way of selling washing powder to housewives. Today, soaps are at the heart of British television. Indeed, they're the heart of British life. Eight of the top 10 programs are soaps. And with both Coronation Street and Emmerdale set to add another episode a week, it seems that we just can't get enough of them. To present the award for the most popular soap, the man whose verbal gifts inspired the England football team to such glorious heights during Euro 96. So successful was England's campaign that it knocked the soaps off the top of the ratings. Would you please welcome Mr. Terry Venable. Good evening. The nominations in the category of the most popular Syria drama are Brookside. Stop my daughter's telling the drugs. You what, do you? I never knew they were stopping in Bangkok, honest. They could be living there for years in filth and squalor, frightened out of their minds. I thought I'd never see me kid again. I was angry, them running off like that. It just made me feel like a right divvy. And that's what I'll tell our Kylie, is it, when she's older? That her father caused all this heartache and misery because you felt like a right divvy? Well, may God forgive you, Gary, because I don't think I ever will. Coronation Street. Standards. So, I'm only happy now your entire family's been cleansed of sin. It'll take more than a few words to purify us Mitchells, but at least it's a star. Ben's going to be different to you two. He's going to be respectable. This boy's the future. I'm very proud of him. Really. Emmerdale. No, Frank was most insistent that I gave it to you personally. It's from your solicitor. I do hope it's not bad news. Sorry if I've spoiled your morning's exercise, Mrs Tate. We all know how you enjoy a good ride. <laughs> Home and away. Well, why do I get the impression this is going to be trouble? trouble. I just think that we need to work out where we stand. Now, I think that fobbing me off earlier the way you did was not right or fair. It's like you're trying to tell me, Donald, that I'm not entitled to my own opinion. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Marion. Of course you're entitled to an opinion of your own, but in, in matters of education and school administration, a headmaster's wife should at least be seen to be supportive. I'll... But that's like saying that I get... Did you just say what I thought you said? 
I did. Yes. I think I just asked you to be my wife. What do you think will be going through your mind as you're receiving the award? Well, I'll be thinking about Michael. Probably wondering for the millionth time why he's not standing up there with me. And um, I'll be thinking about the kids, how, how proud I am of them. It's not the awards that make all this worthwhile, Mandy. It's them. It's my family. Joshua Lovell. Outstanding achievement. And finally, Neighbours. And the winners, it's EastEnders. Gentlemen, that's it for tonight and for another year. I'd like to thank our audience here in the Royal Albert Hall. Thanks to all our award presenters, nominees and winners. But most of all, thanks to you at home for watching and for voting. For me and all my colleagues here tonight, good night. National Television Awards. Outstanding performance in association with Panasonic. <laughs>